South Africa's Secret Service, Mo Sheikh, will continue testifying at the Commission of Inquiry into State Capture in Park Town, Johannesburg, today. Yesterday, well, Sheikh told the Commission that, that the then State Security Minister, Siobongo Twele, stopped the intelligence from investigating the Guptas in 2011. Interesting testimony indeed. Let's unpack it. SABC reporter Mangoba Mtunu joins us now live. Mangoba, thank you very much indeed for coming through. Okay, so. He's saying as early as, what, 2010 or 2011, they could have stopped this. Well, of course, Blaine, he says as early as 2010. And that's when those uh, accusations uh, are made by uh, the then uh, sports minister, Figil Mbalula, ahead of his appointment were mm. surfaced. Of course, you recall that um, Figil Mbalula claimed that he was uh, congratulated by one of the Gupta brothers for becoming sports minister. And he says that, you know, he finds this alarming because this was just months before his appointment. So this is when those allegations had surfaced at the time. But not only that, Moshek also alluded to the fact that there was also, uh, uh, you know, the flagging of the Gupta family by the Americans themselves, mm. the CSI having called, uh, having, uh, I mean, uh, been in touch with uh, the intelligence on mm. an issue of um, Iran, mm. uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, funding one of the Gupta mines, Shiva Uranium. So he says those were two issues that were red flags. So he says at the time that when they, uh, you know, got these two information, they simply, they wanted to investigate these uh, two claims. And of course, with regards to the president and uh, Mbalula's issue, they wanted to investigate whether there was any, you know, leak in the president's office and, uh, you know, whether the Guptas had merely heard this from their friend, the president. So he says, if they had been allowed at the time yeah. to investigate these claims, they could have stopped this. But of course, he says, the then minister of intelligence, uh, Siabong Akwele, is the one that blocked this investigation. He says, after he discovered that there was going to be a probe, he called them and summoned them to a meeting in Cape Town, where he made it clear that he didn't want this investigation to go ahead. And he says, according to him, he failed and compromised state security by doing that. Let's take a listen, Blaine. I would be as direct as I could be. The, I think it, it does constitute a dereliction of duty on the part of the minister. Uh, having assumed the function of the minister uh, and intervening in the way he did, he, he did cause grievous harm to the well-being of the state. Uh, because immediately after this incident, was of course the waterproof landing incident. Now I wonder, I mean the waterproof landing incident for me which is also of, of deep concern because it was a, it's a, a military air force. It is not a normal air force, it is a military air force in which you know to enter a military air force, its airspace etc. requires a phenomenal amount of intervention. Uh, I think that was again a, an incredible narcissistic uh, demonstration of power, unnecessary, uh, and it should not have happened. Uh, it was a violation of national security, and if we were allowed to have done our investigation, the, I don't think you would have had, at least for sure, you would have had the Watergate affair, uh, I mean the waterproof affair. Of course, Blaine, they're highlighting, I mean, he says, of course, that uh, they could have stopped this. But just to correct something, mm. it's the CIA. CIA, thing, that's not the correct. CSI, yes. yeah. So he says they could have even stopped Waterkloof, uh, mm. you know, the saga there, if they were allowed to continue this investigation. But of course, he says, even when they approached the president, the mm. then president, uh, President Jacob Zuma, he too was not willing or he was simply not helpful with regards to taking this investigation forward. And he says, that it is, the reason why we brought it to Zuma is because we didn't believe that Kwele had the right to instruct not to carry with on with this investigation because uh, we were supposed to report to the president on issues of intelligence. So he says they're quite disappointed at the fact that uh, the president himself was not willing uh, to see this investigation through. Let's take a listen to what he says happened at the meeting, which happened a few days after they'd met Kwele when then they went to the president. The collective professional advice of three of the top uh, senior directors and director generals of, of the intelligence community that was advising that there is a legitimate and warranted basis for investigation. Um, and I think in that regard, he didn't properly apply his mind to, to his obligation to, to provide effective and efficient 
direction of the intelligence services. And I think, uh, I think the country has paid the price as a result thereof. So, Mangoba, from what you're getting from uh, Mr. Sheikh's uh, testimony, is he saying that Kuele's, um interference actually compromised state security? That's exactly what he's saying, Blaine. Not only that, he's also saying that the president then, at the time, had misdirected intelligence. And he says the intelligence was well aware of the Guptas, well aware they had intelligence on them. They were saying that at the time they were flagged as a security, uh, a threat to the, secu the, sta the, 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 the security state. Mm -hmm. But he says that the interference of Kwele and then the, 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 also the president not giving the green light for this investigation is what landed us where we are currently. Mm -hmm. And he says all of these show that, you know, the state was compromised by the minister yeah. with his interference and also by the president misdirecting it from going forward with this investigation. And talk to us about what he said with regards to the relationship between himself and the president subsequent to this, about the trust and the, the alleged break in trust between himself and the president. Well, it's been no secret that, you know, Moshe has always been a close ally of uh, former President mm -hmm. Jacob Zuma. In fact, they go way back in the apartheid day. The, they also worked in the intelligence, yes. in the ANC. So, you know, he says that broke his heart when, you know, after speaking to Zuma and he realized that, you know, uh, it seems and it appeared that, you know, Zuma didn't trust him and that he didn't trust the information that they had. And he says, you know, going from a history where they'd come from, he had been his advisor as mm -hmm. well, even, he says he really was taken aback. He was uh, quite hurt by it because, you know, this is a man that uh, they've been with in the struggle and also somebody that uh, he had uh, hoped to trust him. And he says my advice to him was sincere. And the fact that he didn't take that, that advice, which was sincere, really broke him. Mm -hmm. Is he likely to wrap up his testimony today? Well, we're expecting that plane yeah. uh, for him to wrap up his testimony. Of course, we do also expect to hear from uh, uh, Ambassador uh, Jeff, uh, Ambassador um, uh, Gibson Jenge. In Jenge yes, yeah. Gibson Jenge. Just to get the name right, yeah. Gibson Jenge is also going to testify. So he was one of the three mm -hmm. uh, officials at uh, the intelligence that had raised this issue, that had started this investigation mm -hmm. with Moshe. So mm -hmm. we expect him to really corroborate what Moshe had said and uh, really, uh, you know, talk about that meeting as well as the meeting with uh, President yeah. Jacob Zuma. Interesting indeed. Thank you very much indeed for your insight. That was uh, Mangoba Mkunu giving us, uh, breaking it down with regards to the testimony of uh, Moshe, the former South African head of a secret service all right so we've got some uh tweets with regards to our question of the day and we ask you what do you think about uh, moshek's uh, testimony yesterday you can send us your thoughts at the agenda underscore sab so let's put it up and see what you have to say azim uh, says well the way i'm so fed up with the state capture commission i don't even know who's telling the truth or lies Aish Naza says, Moshek is, uh, well, right. This kind of corruption was planned intelligently for protection with a consolidated form of capture that would make us not to believe whistleblowers. And uh, the master of it all will use the ANC members to protect himself and with our little knowledge to defend him. Mulevatsi Masedi saying, sour grapes have a commission rehabilitation. And IH Nazal, as we speak, law enforcement agencies are accusing Mr. Jonas of lying, whereas they know that they were captured. A good example is the NPA. The denialism will take its toll on these corrupt individuals who will use everything in their power to diverge every information. And Barry says, I find Moshek's testimony very interesting, but the fact that it remains that all these whistleblowers benefited under Jacob Zuma's administration. So what is the point? Are they also afraid to go to jail for corruption because good educated people don't affiliate themselves with crime? Well, so you say. <laughs> <laughs> Send us your thoughts at the agenda underscore.